Well, we at it again, y'all. Boy, I tell you, if it wasn't for Christians, I don't know if I would have any content. And yet, I'm still sick of y'all. It's the show that will get you thinking And where the topics are Feel free to comment Whether we agree or not Cause he's got something to say Sir Walter Jones Sir Walter Jones Seven days a week, always on time, but this time is not free. So watch the Jones, always on sleep. Latest trending topics had you jumping out your seat. He's got something to say. Come on in. The water's fine. Hello, everybody. So the So the Jones Show. I'm he. Mm. Ah. Ah. <laughs> it is the evening edition, baby. Come on in, the water is fine. The water is fine. Hey, y'all doing all right out there? Good, good, good. I want to thank y'all for coming here on the show. Listen, there's a fly in here right now. A fly. A fly is in the room. I don't know why. Maybe because I got a lot of lights and it is summertime in the city. Candy Rose, your email keeps coming back. Check your email because I did send you the show teaching from Tuesday. Y'all all right out there, bunkers? Let's go. Hmm. So good to see y'all and all of y'all out there in uh, Radio Land. <laughs> uh, let's get this thing crack a lack and listen. I'm going to be like I always be, real. I'm going to be real with y'all tonight. I'm always real with y'all tonight. But it looks like to me, I got to keep repeating myself because um, stuff just keeps happening. I mean, I'm trying to correct myself here. Stuff keeps happening and it's getting, listen, come closer, boys and girls. Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come close. Come, come a little closer. Air it extra dry. I take, I take showers, all right? You won't smell, you won't, you won't ever smell, you won't smell nothing crazy on me. I, I always try to be clean from my, from my, my esophagus, my mastication glands. You won't smell my breath. You won't, I like to dry clean my clothes. Come closer, come closer. All right, I want y'all to see something. I think the saints just want to, they, they just want to do stuff. All right, now, <clears throat> These here shoes here. Look at these shoes. Look at these shoes. Mm-hmm. These shoes here. All right. Obviously, these shoes are being worn by a woman who is part of an Episcopal. I don't know. She's got a robe on or something like that. Well, pretty, 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 pretty shoes. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get a little closer to the feet. Get a little closer to the feet. Okay. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, oh. The feet is looking just a little bit like it may need some assistance. <laughs> just a little bit of assistance, okay? All right. But I'll get with it because sometimes, ladies, you know, you may be having one of them days. All right? You may be having one of them days where you just need a little, <laughs> you need a little assistance. Right, that's cool. That's cool. Let's see what she's wearing when she's out uh, on the golf course, okay? All right. Okay. Not 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 too bad. Let's see. Okay. I get it. Slim lady. <laughs> no problem. Let's see. I'm gonna see what else I can find while well, she's in ministry and she may oh, here's something here. She she got the mic. And she still got them shoes on. Gone girl, gone. <laughs> All right. She got the mic. She's 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 rocking in the roll and getting ready to go into the tent revival. All right, so far, so good. Let's get a little closer to the feet 
and then see if we can see that she need any help. Okay. All right. Let's see right here. Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> Who? Lord have mercy on my soul. Yeah, I think a pity, a pity needs to be cured. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You all want to see the lady, huh? Y'all want y'all want to see the lady? Okay. Let me show y'all the lady so that y'all might have a little heart. Okay. Here is the lady. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, y'all. It's a man. <laughs> My bad. My my bad. Hold on. Let's see. Hold on. Yep. It's a dude. <laughs> my bad. I thought I thought it was a lady. Eh? Let's see. What else we can find? Oh yeah, I get it now. <laughs> it's a dude who has lost some hair and some sense. <laughs> Geraldine said, I knew it. <laughs> okay, now who is this person? <laughs> D, D say, Pastor, no, no. <laughs> Who is this person? Okay, this person is um, meet the controversial uh, Togolis pastor who said God has instructed him to wear high heels for evangelism. Uh -huh. God has instructed him to wear high heels for evangelism. Okay. Can I say something about this? Because you know I will because I'm on the show right now. Here's the thing about this. Christians love to put God, defame him, put his name out there and saying God wants me to do something or tell y'all something or tell y'all to do something. This man just needed an alibi. He just, he has a, a shoe fetish, a woman shoe fetish. I like women's shoes. All right. Borderline fetish too. I like to see women in nice shoes. That's what my fetish is. I, I go to, when my daughter want to go shopping for shoes, I said, can I go? I want to pick out your shoes. I, when I was married, when I, when I had girlfriends, I said, can, can I go to the store? I want to show, I want to pick out the shoes that I think you would look nice in. That's always been me. All right. I don't, I'm not, I dresses. Yes. Yes. Yep. Listen, ladies, if you want to go to the dress shop and you want a man uh, opinion, take me. Oh, I can dress a woman down. I can dress her down. Let me tell you, I'm telling you, I can dress her down. But one thing I will not do, you will never see me wear the shoe. <laughs> he said, he said God told him to put it on. But what he's really saying is he wants to wear them. And so in order to be accepted to wear them, then you have to tell a gullible audience that God says to wear them. Now he's comfortable wearing them because now he has an alibi. God <laughs> is his alibi. Uh, homosexuals do it. When they come out of the closet, pedophiles do it. As I, I think some of you who are adulterers, you, you do it, you know, you know, we, everybody who got something, uh, some kind of dirt, sin, crime, whatever, you got to justify it by saying, yeah, but possibly, I remember, uh, Yolanda Adams, oh, I shouldn't have said the name, now it's out there. She got married and got divorced. And then here was her words and reason why she said that she got that divorce. She said, God. Planned it just to be temporary. <laughs> it was just a temporary. And she started to tune up. I said, sit down, Yolanda. Just sing, baby. Don't talk. Just sing. <laughs> because I seriously don't think God told you to marry a man for temp just temporarily. Divorce him so that you could have a test a lie. <clears throat> a fake -amony. Mm -mm. A test. Timony. I'm sorry, y'all. This is what Christians do. We lie and put God's name in there and say, God told me to tell you. And let me tell you something. God is sitting in heaven saying, Jesus, son, 
I know for a fact. I didn't talk. To, I don't even know this person. Why do they keep putting words in, in their mouth and saying it is that I said it or putting words in my mouth? I never said that. Mm. Speak those things to be not as though they were. God said, wait a minute now. I did say that. <laughs> I did say that. But I, but I said it. Why are y'all saying it? You can't speak nothing that be not as though it were. You can't do it because if you could, then you could speak prosperity in your life. You can speak all the cancer out of your loved one's bodies. You can speak peace all over your territory and your town. You can declare and decree and proclaim all over the place. You can do this stuff. But why is that we, when we quote in church, no one ever check. Why y'all don't be checking? You don't check the word. I don't, I, 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 I don't understand you all. All right, so let's go to Juanita and her bottom. Oh, Lord. Juanita, my cousin, and her bottoms. Listen, this show ain't about her. It's not about her. It's about all y'all. I'm going to use her as a, as a whooping boy. <laughs> Again, for how many times have I done a Yolanda Adams? I'm sorry, a Juanita to the bottom show, huh? Hmm? How many times? I lost count. I lost count. So she's at it again, but here's the thing. I'm not surprised that she's at it again because how else are you going to continue to upkeep what you have? In the fleecing of the people, you have to keep upkeep what you have, so you have to fleece the people. And you got to find someone who's gullible. You got to find them. You got to find them or you will lose everything. So as many of you have already seen this. All right, so I'll play. This is um, Shula King's version. There's other versions out there. All right, and let's go ahead and listen to what she got to say. Bow your heads. Don't believe me? It is. There's 21 people in this building that God said will give $1,000. He said 21 people in this building come now wherever you are. Give me an envelope. Give me some envelopes. He said 21 people come now wherever you are. $1,000 ain't nothing in comparison to what God's going to do. I didn't call for buckets yet, y'all. It ain't nothing. There's promotions that you want. You're not going to get it until you make that sacrifice to God. Line up right here. I know what I'm talking about. Older and younger. I know you're in here because the prophecy don't lie. The spirit of the Lord don't lie. The spirit of the Lord don't lie. The spirit of the Lord don't lie. He's not a lying spirit. He said 21 people in here. If God wasn't talking, nobody would have moved. He said 21 people in this building. That's what he means. He said, 21 people in this building. How do I know God is talking to me? Because you got it. That's how I know God is talking to you. Because it's in your account right now. Because it's on your credit card right now. That's how I know God is talking to you. Yeah, that's it. That's her. Yeah, that's it. That's her. Um, yeah. That's how she know that God is talking to you. Because you got a credit card. You, you came to work. You came to, to church. With the with a credit card in your hand, that's that's just look in your pocket. That's how you know. Mm. So I was reading a comment that went forth. This is on Truth Unveiling Ministries. You all know Truth Unveiling Ministries, the young man. So there's a woman who made a comment on Truth Unveiling. All right, buckle up, you all. I want you to. Buckle it thou uppeth. All right. If you do the math, that's right. It's 21,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, she got paid that night. Yeah. 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 And, and if she only got 10, 15 up there, she was going to hold that service hostage until she got the 21. You better believe that. I've seen this happen so many times. Okay. All right. So, uh, let, let, let's, let's, let's go to this comment here and, uh, and then, and then I'm gonna let y'all go early. Okay. I'm gonna let you go early. Is that okay? Is that okay? Y'all want to go, go early? Good, good, good. Grace. This is Grace Elizabeth Joy Anderson. All right. Okay. 
this is public. So this is nothing that, you know, she, she wrote this publicly on Truth Unveiling Ministries wall. So she wanted us all to see it. Hear what it say. I've been in her meetings where she's done that over and over again. The last time she needed 17000 so that she could buy her new multi-million dollar house, her fifth house in South Africa. She was having trouble selling her house in America and was about to lose it if she didn't get this 17000 So she told the audience that God told her that 17 people were to give 1000 to help her with her house and to get their blessing. There was a visiting pastor up on the platform with her who had just received $17,000 that day as a gift from somebody. She knew about it. She turned to him and told him he was to give her that $17,000. She said, I was horrified. I would I have gotten up and left totally, but I was driven a couple. Um, I was driving a couple there back home and I had to wait for them. I did get up and move out into the hallway of the hotel where the service was. I was up. I was upset. Steam was coming out of my ears. I'm sure I was so angry. She said she had been very, very sick all week. Also, and the doctors told her not to make the trip from the East coast to the West. She even collapsed on the plane, but she was determined to go between, because she knew that all she had to do was tell uh, tell the saints she needed $17,000 and she would get it. Never again would I listen to her. It's witchcraft to the max. And that is the, not the only one of the services I've been in where she milked the people like that, along with my former pastor in Los Angeles, uh, sad to say Cindy Trim mm-hmm. anybody know her does the same thing never do we ever have to pay for our blessing mm. y'all remember Oral Roberts the great Oral Roberts who pushed Carlton Pearson out there in the stratosphere in his ministry remember him Oh, I remember it well. Oral Roberts told y'all that if y'all, if he don't raise a million dollars, was it a million or how many millions? If he don't raise a million dollars within 24 hours, God was going to kill him. I'm only laughing so that I won't cry. Some people ask, why do you always laughing? Because I don't want to either cry or cuss. <laughs> so I have to laugh. You ever been so upset that you just laughed it off? My father was, was beating us one time because we had done something stupid and he beating us and he was so mad till he started to laugh. <laughs> have you ever been that way? Yeah, Luana. Luann, why why call it put an A on your 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 name? Why I do that? <laughs> I I just had to. I, Ron, I had to laugh because I don't want to cuss. <laughs> or Robert said, if y'all don't give me a million dollars, God's gonna kill me. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> y'all raised that money. Y'all raised that money. Yes, you did. And God didn't kill him. <laughs> God held back the angel of death. <laughs> Let me tell y'all. All right. It's not funny. But I have to laugh because I don't want to choke nobody to death. <laughs> Oh man, somebody said that that ninja would be dead. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, it's sad. So Juanita decided to have a um what do y'all call them things? A university. <laughs> I got one too. I got a university. It's called the Sunday School University. And guess what? I haven't charged y'all not one dollar. Not once. And the university been up for about a year now. I've never asked one bunker for one dollar for any of my teaching. Never in the university. Our online classes will be out. 
But for a whole year, I ain't never asked y'all for nothing. Okay? And even when my, my class is finally released, it won't be $14.99. That's what she asked y'all for, $1,499. Or was it $1,497? It was something like that. All right? She gave y'all a savings of about a dollar. <laughs> And they just had their graduation, you all. Mm -hmm. Kenneth Copeland? No, nah, that was Oral Roberts. I remember that like it was yesterday. That was Oral Roberts, Rogers. Can, can somebody fact check me? That was Oral Red and Bummer <laughs> Roberts. All right. Because Kenneth Copeland, you know, that man, he's a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And, uh, uh, yep, there you go, Troy. I knew it. It was oral. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, you're talking to somebody in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. On my computer, it doesn't tell me who you all are responding to. So it just says comment. And I, don't, I won't know if you responded to someone. <laughs> it doesn't tell me. Okay. So, um, yeah. So what Juanita Bynum did, and she just had her graduation this week, you all. You had to go to YouTube and look at the graduation. She made a call for all you people from around the world to join her in this $1,500 class. And when you, when you look at the student body, <laughs> I don't know. It might be about 40 people. It might be about 40 students. I don't know. It's a few of them in there. Here, here go. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Because I don't want to cuss. Here's the student body here. There they are. <laughs> there they are. And their family is on the left. They got cap and gowns to teach these ladies how to pray. Now, I, I had to look down because I was looking to see if I see any men. <laughs> well, I, was, I still, let me see if I can take a picture of this. Hold on. Let me see if I can take a picture of this because I, I didn't see any men. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to take a picture of this, see if it's going to work. All right. Hold on. Come on, lady, hurry up. All right, right there. All right. Uh, it, it won't show up on the picture. It's dark. The picture's dark. I wonder why there ain't no men in there, in there y'all. Can y'all raise your hand <laughs> and tell me why there ain't no men in that class? Huh? Hmm? In antibody. The, uh, in 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 antibodies. Hmm? Oh, yeah, it did come out. All right, here we go, right here. Now, look at this. Let me get a little closer. Let's see now. Ladies, ladies. There's a man back there, but I think he's family. He's family. He ain't got a, he don't have a cap and gown on. Let's see. Ladies, 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 ladies. Ladies, let's see. Is that that's that's a that's a lady. Look like a lady. Look like a lady. Hmm. Mm, that's interesting. Can y'all tell me why ain't no men there? Huh? Huh? Hmm? Why ain't no men there? Hmm? Uh, Andrea said, uh, I don't think <laughs> she like men. <laughs> huh? Why? why? <laughs> Cap and gowns from Amazon. <laughs> Stop playing. Huh? Why ain't no men there? The men are hiding. <laughs> Yeah, huh? Can y'all tell me? Uh, Candy got it. Yeah, women are driven by the emotion. Mm -hmm. Men are factual and not emotional. They need to follow systematic theology more than women. Yeah, women follow Juanita because she's... <laughs> now, here's the thing, y'all. These are women saying this. The men ain't responding. These are the women saying this about women. So ladies, um, brothers, listen to the women. <laughs> the women are the smart ones in the room. Listen to them. Listen to them. Listen, listen, listen heavily. Listen heavily.
Okay. All right. So, uh, let me let me say this to y'all. Okay, I'm gonna say this to because I'm gonna let you go early. I'm gonna let you go early. I'm gonna let you go early. It's 25 minutes. And I'm gonna let you go early. Yep. I, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something I never done before. <laughs> let me tell y'all something. What Juanita Bonham did and still doing is a shame. Yes, but guess what? You all have been up under that kind of ministry all your life. You just now coming out of it. You just now coming out of it. You are just now coming out of it. Many of you who are watching me right now, you have been in that deep and you didn't even know you were being fleeced. You didn't know it. You went to church, brought your pocketbook with you. You brought your wallet and they had their usual order of service. They raised a benevolent offering at the beginning, depending if you're Baptist or if you're Kojic, then benevolent or missions often, depending on what, you know, what's in the name. That's the first offering. And then they did a general offering. That offering was tithe. And then they did uh, an, an offering offering because they gave you two envelopes, depending on what church you was in. In Kojic, they gave you two envelopes. They wasted trees. They gave you one for often, one for tie at three. And then if there is a guest speaker, guess what they're going to do either before he preach or after he preach. Hmm. 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 You're going to get another offering out of you at number four. Okay. Guess what he going to do. As he's winding down before he sits down. Hmm. 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 Take a wild guess. Huh? Wild guess. You got it. He going to raise another offering and call it a sacrificial offering. What he going to do is what Juanita Bynum did right there. There's 21 people in the room and God said is in the room. I'm not going to sit down until I get it all. That's five offerings raised at the church on, on a given Sunday. So this is why typically some people will bring $5 to church because they know it's going to be five offerings raised. Go to a Church of God in Christ convention. You best believe you're going to get that many times they're going to dig in your pocket. Your district meeting, your state meeting, if it's the women's meeting, the youth meeting, it don't matter. They're going to pull a lot of money out your pocket. If you're smart, you're going to bring $5 to church. <laughs> so the games they play, we know how we knew how to play them. Just bring five singles and just go up there and drop it in the bucket like you dropped 100. Ask me how oh, I know. You all have been fleeced for generations because Mud Deer was fleeced. And she said she's doing the, the Lord's work. Meanwhile, there are red slips at the house. What do I mean by red slips? Well, a red slip is called a utility, you see. We used to see these. I used to have these where people, this is where, in, in my house is, is people's gas in Chicago. They're the ones who get supply the gas in your house. It's called people's gas. So NICOR is another, but NICOR can't do nothing because people gas own uh, the pipes. I say. And then Com is Com Ed. It used to be called Commonwealth Edison, but they shortened it like Mickey D's uh, or like KFC, you know. Everybody, BK, everybody shortening now. Y'all y'all, y'all ain't got time to say Commonwealth Edison. Is it going to take too much out of you? Hmm? Will, will you run out of breath to say Commonwealth Edison? You just had to say Com Ed, huh? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Huh? Okay. All right. And so uh, these uh, bills came to the house, and when you opened them up, you knew you didn't pay the bill. 
Okay. This one ain't been open yet. I pays my bills on time. I, I don't I don't believe in those those slips. I, I got those slips when I was in my twenties. I don't get them no more. I don't play with the uh Mr. 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 Lee. All right. What y'all call what y'all call the man? I call him Mr. Lee. I don't mess with Mr. Lee. All right, so you open it up and then It'll 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 have it'll have a nice white color with the bill, and then up under it will be red. <laughs> all this portion right here, all the way down, is all red. I've seen a lot of those come to my house, and that red means if you don't pay this bill September fourth, that means that's four. Five days from now, we are going to shut you off. We got two ways to do it. Number one, a man is going to come and show up at your house and wherever the meter is in the backyard. And you see this, if you see this dude in the backyard with a utility belt on, leave him alone. He got a ranch. He going to shut that sucker off and put a lock on it. You understand? But if your meter, when I was coming up, the meters was inside the house and they would bang on the house and knock on the door, and ring the bell and they couldn't get in. So they, 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 were, they, they weren't as dumb as y'all thought they was. What they did was they, they went up underground. You see, there's wires and pipes and stuff up underground if you live in a major city. And uh, yeah, so what they did was you saw them in the front lawn and, 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 a, and a truck pulls up and it had a, it, it, one of them one with, with, the, with the mouth. And they, they get in that truck and they dig in the ground. <laughs> they dig in the ground. Or you see somebody in the front lawn with, with this thing going. What are you looking for? He not looking for gold or silver. He looking for the meter. There it is right there. And then he take a shovel. And he rats down there and he goes, he shuts you off <laughs> because you think he need to come in your house and put a lock on the, no, nah, baby, he got, he, he got a way to shut it off right up on the ground. <laughs> and then depending on your utility, if he don't, if he can't get in the backyard, if he can't get in the house, and if he, if they did not uh, have anything, a shutter valve in the front, the utility company, it was smart enough to uh, computerize their system where they calling you, uh, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, you got a shut off notice. We're doing a courtesy call. If you don't, if you don't pay this bill today, I don't have it. Can I? Uh, no, the can I? We gave you an opportunity over and over in the can I's. We gave you payment plan options or what have you. We had you told. We told you, you can go down there to the government to see the program and get some type of help. And when you didn't do any of that stuff, so no, 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 sir. You you owe us today. Oh, it's got this. It's shut off today. But please, please, I'm a I'm a pastor and uh and and. If, <laughs> Well, you should have told the Lord about it because Jesus paid it all. Uh, sorry, sir. Click. And then what she do? She reach over there to the computer and say, hey, let's see. 555 Sycamore Avenue. Click. And then everything in your house go dark. Click. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've been there a few times, y'all. I thank God for my latter years. <laughs> They're greater than my, than my young, stupid years. <laughs> Click. I had a whole wife and a whole child. <laughs> Click. Daddy, it's a blackout in the neighborhood. Yeah, I know. I know. All right. Well, what are we gonna do? Is it's um, is we um, my mama told me to keep some flashlights in the house, <laughs> and uh, we got some candles. I've been mean to burn these candles. <laughs> I've been mean to burn these things. <laughs> Baby, you got a big lighter? No, we don't have one of those. We sanctify. We don't smoke. Oh, okay. Well, you got you got a match. I think it's a match up under the um, up under the, the dresser drawer <laughs> because you know we had the stoves where you had to get the light. You had to light the stove. Each one of them you had to light them. <laughs> we didn't have all that electric ignition stuff y'all got today. We had it. We had it. We had to. We had to climb upstairs. We had to go to school barefooted. Six miles. 
uphill in the snow. <laughs> so we had to light the pilot light. Uh huh. And then we had to turn on. We had to, if there was gas in the house, thank God we had a gas stove, you see, because if we had an electric stove, ain't nobody eating today. So sometimes the lights would be shut off, but the gas is still on. The gas man is coming next week. So we had enough gas in the house to, so we can turn the pilot on, light the pilot, turn the gas on, turn the oven on, and then what you had to do? It gets too warm. It gets too dry in there, so you had to get you some, some pots and pans, put some water in it on the stove, and you had to boil, uh, <laughs> you had to boil the water because you don't want it too dry. Uh, in the house you understand uh, ask me how i know <clears throat> i became a scientist because i couldn't i couldn't afford i couldn't afford i couldn't afford it not realizing how dangerous it was all that carbon coming in the house and sometimes we were so stupid we went to we went to bed at night with the oven on god takes care of babies and food <laughs> thank you for the super chat Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. I, I think Rogers is giving me a super chat because she think my bills, my my lights about to get shut. <laughs> come on, come on, sure. Uh, 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 sure tut. What is that? Sure tut. Well, anyway, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> so we had that that oven going on and the boiling water, and we 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 got we stayed warm for a little while until the gas man came and shut it all off. <laughs> And then sometimes you see why you see uh, 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 um, a long extension cord coming from my house, going from my house to the, to the next door neighbor's house. Uh, Sherlyn. Hey, Mr. John, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Listen, 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 listen. Something's going on with my electricity. I don't know if it's the, if it's the fuse box or, or uh, some critters eating some wire or something like that. Can we borrow some of your electricity for a couple of days? I'll give you five dollars on it, you know, until we can figure this out. Yeah, 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 yeah. How you gonna do it? Well, I, I registered uh, the cord is behind. You see that cord coming out my window and my, and, and, uh, my baby's window? And then there's a cord coming from the basement. Yeah, can you, <laughs> can you, can you plug this one in the front room, plug this one in the middle room, plug this one in the kitchen? Yeah, yeah, I, I can do that. <laughs> And then I'm trying to figure it out. Meanwhile, my life is out for 30 whole days. And when, <laughs> when Sherlyn get her bill, it's a thousand dollars. Sherlyn get her bill in the mail. She, she like, mm hmm. Da -de 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 -de. Oh, people's gas. La 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 la. I had such a good day, honey. I had such a great day. Oh, the boss said, I am the. I am a credit to, to my race. Oh, I'll tell you, honey, our life is really licking up. Ah! <laughs> Baby, you all right? <sighs> Can you call him, Brother Jones? Can you put him on the phone right quick? <laughs> ah! <laughs> she had a thousand dollars. <laughs> He said he gonna give me five dollars. That it cost me five dollars just to walk next door. <laughs> Danny said, "Please don't scream." <laughs> I'm telling y'all what I know. I don't know y'all wondering what this got to do with the show. I'm gonna get there. <laughs> I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get there. I ran that woman's bill of a thousand dollars. Now she got to shut off notice. It came the next week, <laughs> she the next month. She got to shut off notice. Mr. Jones, this is for you. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling y'all what I know. So why did I go down? Uh, uh, why did I tiptoe through the tulips that way? Let me tell you why. Because you all, we had shut off notices at the house, but when we got to church. You all told us that God needs a thousand dollars. And they needed you to know that you can't get blessed unless we give you our bill money. So many of you fell for the banana in the tailpipe bit for generations. 
<laughs> Oscar, Oscar said it's better than IMAX. Y'all fell for the rope dope Because they said, God says, God says, God says. Let me tell y'all something. My father suffered greatly. My father suffered greatly because my father was a carpenter. I'm getting ready to tell the family business. I'm getting ready to tell the family business. I never told the family business like this before, but I'm getting ready to tell him. I, I talked to him today. I, I should have told him, tonight I'm going to tell the family business. All right? My father was an accomplished, one of the greatest carpenters in the city of Chicago. All right? He retired right now, so my brothers, they doing all that work. And the churches would hire my father to Build churches, erect rooms and put in bathrooms and roofs and, and cornerstones and furniture and tile and carpet. I mean, he did everything, put up walls, he demolished, he put up garages for the church, all kind of stuff. He worked hard for the church. <laughs> Joyce said, do you have permission? Joyce, you awake? Girl, you know what time it is. It's your bedtime. <laughs> all right. So. My father worked for pastors. And I would literally see my father at home going over the bills with my mother. God rest her soul. Baby, did we pay the water bill? Well, we're a little late, but we have to do this. Okay. Baby, where's your light bill? Did we pay that? Yeah, we do, but we had to do this. All right, where the gas bill at, baby? We, it's here, but I, I, I can only put a, a $20 on that. Okay. Uh, let me see. What, how much groceries was it this week? Uh, well, about $200. You know, it was a whole lot of kids. But, you know, we just, we just barely made it. Okay. All right. What about the insurance? Well, well, we, well we had to pay that or we was going to lose the place. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. If it's, what, if the mortgage, we got to pay the mortgage, baby. We got, yeah, I had to pay the mortgage, but I told the light company, give me another 30 days. Okay. All right. All right, baby. I saw that. And then he would look at his, he had a yellow pad where all of his contract works were from pastors. And these pastors, these jokers, these, <clears throat> I need to be as respectful as possible. Elder so-and-so, late, elder so-and-so. Late, pastor so and so. Late, bishop so and so. Late. This pastor decides, I'm not gonna pay you. This pastor, I'm fighting with because this pastor, we got to go to court. This pastor, this pastor. That was my father. He suffered because the church didn't want to pay him. A doc, can I get a deal? Can I get a deal? Okay, okay. And then he do the work. Well, listen, the offering was low. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna raise it. We're gonna have you. We're gonna do appreciation for you. Okay, Brett Jones, you come and you play the guitar, and then we're gonna, we're gonna have an appreciation for you, and then we're gonna pay you that way. I'm telling y'all, I saw that coming up. Disturbed me, disturbed me, and that's why I said I can't do it. There's no way I can't do it. I can't do it. So I saw good men suffer while ungodly men was fleecing the flock. Never a hungry day in their lives. Their mortgages and their homes were paid off because the church did it. And then they, they had pastors' anniversaries and they would raise thousands of dollars. He's already getting paid his salary and he's getting extra on first Sunday. They raise him an extra offering on first Sunday. And if you're Church of God in Christ, they have a, a shepherd night in the district meeting. You take care of your shepherd. Then they had a shepherd night in the state meeting. You had to get a little extra for a night for the, the, your pastor. All right. And then he, it's time for him to go to Memphis for the Holy Convocation. Then you did what's called a send off. So it's, it was lucrative to be a pastor in the Church of God in Christ. I don't care how small your flock was. Come on, Danny. And then there were the pounds. 
you see. And my father, raising nine children, was struggling because he was working for the church. Mm -hmm. This is why I go hard on the church the way I do. Because some of y'all ain't no good. You ain't worth the gum on the bottom of my shoe. So how do we cap this up? Let me tell y'all something. My brother didn't ask me to do this. <clears throat> I asked my brother to teach on Tuesdays. Uh, Danny, I don't know where you were. Danny missed class. I asked my brother Rodney to teach the bunkers on our private Zoom class on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. I said, will you teach, help me teach? Um, because I just want a freshness in the session because I've been teaching, teaching, teaching for about a year now. And I want you to kind of give me a little break. You teach. The, the bunkers trust you as much as they do me. They appreciate you. They know you're teaching. Go stand in the corner, Danny, and uh, that's going to cost you $1,000. Danny, cash at me $1,000, please. That's it. <laughs> Okay. So he laid it out, y'all. He laid it out. We went, we went, we, we went for two hours. Y'all know I don't play with that. Nine o'clock central time. We shut it off. I don't care what else, whatever we didn't get a chance to do. Nine o'clock. We shut that off. He did his thing. And then the Lord says, now pour back into him. So I put his, uh, he didn't know I was doing this. I put his cash app up there and I said, Bunkers, if you can, be a blessing to Rodney Jones. I didn't think none of it. Uh, we ended the, the teaching. I went and got me something to eat upstairs. And my brother sent me a text. And you can kind of read his emotion. The bunkers had came through for my brother Rodney in a powerful financial way. Y'all got to understand many of the bunkers are on fixed income. And they had came through for him. Brought tears to his eyes. He said, Walter, let me tell you something. It has been a rough week for me because I have been giving out, giving out, giving out. As a pastor, I'm, I give out to I, I just don't have any to left to give. He says, and the bunkers poured back into me in a way I didn't, I was not expecting. I said, you see what I'm saying? I said, this is why the Lord asked me to get you to teach. This is why. Because he knew you needed it. Because you don't fleece the flock. <clears throat> I seen my <clears throat> former pastor, Bishop Moody, suffer. People thought, hey Danny, people thought that Bishop Moody was a multimillionaire. They thought he was a very wealthy man because he was the presiding, he was the president <clears throat> of the missions, international missions. For those of you who don't understand, that's a huge position in the church of God in Christ. Six million strong. The numbers go up and down, depending on how you Google it. Some, some Google numbers will say eight million. We ain't got that many. All right. So let's take it down to about six, five million. All right. Five million strong. And he put the, the church in, in, well, we in about 100 countries right now. This one man was over in the missions department since 1975 until he finally retired in, I don't know, 2018, some, something right now. So y'all do, do the math. The longest serving missions president in Church of God in Christ history. He traveled the world. But here's the thing. People thought he was wealthy, but Bishop Moody didn't have any money. He didn't. <clears throat> There were several times. See, the local church know stuff that the national church don't know. And when the when the when the lo, when the international church would say, Bishop Moody, we need you to fly to Africa. 
we, we need you to go to Cuba. We need we need you to go to, to Ghana. We, we need you to, to fly to Russia or somewhere. Okay, we need you to fly here, fly there. He had to pull money out of his own account. And it was nothing to see him in the back in coach. He didn't do first class. He flew coach with the crying baby and uh, oversized uh, passenger on this side. So Bishop Moody had to sit in a seat like this, you know, <laughs> all the way somewhere. You know, some of those flights were obviously the worldwide, the, the international flights, you got more room. So you on a plane for 15 hours or so. And, but many of the local flights in, in within the States, he back there like this. A president of the church of God in Christ, six million strong. He had to pay for that seat. Fly around the world with just his suit on. No tie. No, he just had one of them, one of them street suits on. One bag. Like Gandhi. This is why he was so loved because when it comes to that pious word, what's that, what's that word? That humble word where the Pope's supposed to be <laughs> a living. That's the way Bishop Moody was. He just was humble. He never begged. He didn't do after offerings, you know, the sacrificial offerings. And all. Nope. That's just the way it was. And there were days when he at church and he couldn't, he couldn't pay a bill because the tax bill was due and he could not pay it. And, he, and the word, the, the, the church got wind that he couldn't pay it. And we would, we would in our church raise, we would throw money at his feet, throw money at his feet. And he was so humble that he couldn't take it. And I would see him get up and he would turn around and kneel on the ground and pray in his seat because he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to tell people, stop, stop. We're going to be okay. And he would, he would just pray and, you know, tears would come down his eyes. That's the man I know. That's the man I catered my life after. He always showed humility to the point to where it hurt him. And people looked at him as being a weak man, but they didn't see the strength that was in his hum His meekness was his strength. Because Bishop Moody raised up many pastors. My church now, even though he's been dead for a few years, we have about 13 elders at our church. And most of the bishops and the superintendents in our church, if you can get two men, if you go to their church and you, if you see two men in leadership, you, you bless. But he birthed about 20 something pastors. And at one time we had almost 20 ministers and elders at our church. So when the men stood up, half the church almost <laughs> stood up at our church because men saw his life and say, that's, that's a real man right there. A real man. So I said, God, if that is Elijah, make me Elisha. I want to cater my life after humility. So when I ask the bunkers for money, you best believe it ain't going nowhere but to somebody who need it. So when I see stuff like Juanita and her Bina and uh, Brian Song Carnality and all these men and women who are fleecing the flock, the first thing I do is get upset and then I get sad. I get really sad. I get sad for the ones who are doing the fleecing, but then I get sad for some of you who will s still sit there and let somebody urinate on you like that. That's what it looked like to me. It's just urinating on you. And you sitting there taking it. So when you get mad at this Juanita Bynum and the people in that audience, get mad at the situation that you used to be in and find a way to help other folk get up out of that mess. Now, I done lied and said I was going to be short. It's already about an hour in. I done lied. We usually go an hour and a half, though, so let me cut it off. Get mad at yourself for sitting in there all those years and you're giving all that money to that building in whom 
you the man said God says for you to give to build, but you if you're finding it difficult to keep the building up, is that God's house? Huh? You mean to tell me God told you to build him a house so that y'all would be in debt for 30, 40, 50 years? You have to refinance? And if something came in on the, in the roof because you lost so many members, you can't, y'all got to go back to the bank and get a loan? The building not even yours. And God told you to build that house. <laughs> Come on, Oscar said, I learned how to use the Baptist finger. I don't understand that. Part. I just don't understand that. I seen my uncles, who are all pastors, suffer because they were trying to upkeep a building. People just left, left, and then you get down to this one, a few families who are paying their tithes and offerings, and they're suffering. Suffering, can't sleep at night, and pain in their body. They can't even afford to be sick because they got to take care of the church. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all can have that gig. I don't want that gig. You know, my church is right here when I wake up, <laughs> right here in the house. Me, Rebecca, and my grandbabies. Yeah, it's right here. I just happen to I just happen to go to a building on Sunday and worship with you all. All right. But as far as building God a house, God don't need a brick and mortar house. Because Jesus prayed. And his prayer was that you be in them and they be in you. And then as you keep reading, as Peter was preaching, and he was talking about now, come on, y'all. What did God say about living, uh, living in a house made with man's hands? He said, come on. The heavens is my footstool. The earth is my footstool. <laughs> the sky is the limit for me. What makes you think that I'm going to go down here and live in a house that you built for me? Huh? That's what the words say. Hmm. What makes you think that I need you to do that? So why do we build buildings today? We build it so the people can be housed, come out of the element. But what you all did was you went to the extreme and you, you wanted to be like the other people across town. The Israelites wanted a king. God says, I have set this up as a theocracy. I'm your king. You don't need one. And they said, but the other nations got a king. So God gave them what they wanted. You all says, we need a house. And so instead of getting something that just would just right for you all, you said, no, we need a $10 million house because if you build it, they will come. Isaiah 66 and 1, Paul was quoting, or was it Peter? Thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye built unto me? Mm. And where is the place of my rest? Mm. 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 This is where I get in trouble. I think I saw uh, Bishop Michael Thurston here. Michael Thurston, I, 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 thought, I, I thought I saw uh, 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 his name pop up. Is he here? There he is. D-E, <laughs> did you forget the rest of it? <laughs> How you doing, man? Mm -hmm. uh, you just answered what I was thinking. Joy, praise God. So here's what I need y'all to do. There he is. There's the great Michael Thurston, a great man of God. So here's what I need y'all to do. No, I'm not doing a fundraiser. I'm not getting ready to collect an offering. No, <laughs> I'm not getting ready to collect an offering. We don't do that here. All right. I do put my cash app up there for people who often say, hey, Brother Jones, what's your cash app? I put that up there for information purposes only. But no, no, we don't we don't we don't beg for money over here. <laughs> amen. Amen. There he is. Yes, sir. He's a great man. Um, so here's here's the thing. 
if you attend a church in a building, since you build it, take care of it. You understand? You build it. Take care of it. The problem we're having is the fleecing part. Stop saying that God says this, God said that God, no, no, no. Pay the bill. Notice what the woman said about why they buy them. You got seventeen a seventeen thousand dollar debt. If you tell the people the truth, they'll wipe out your debt. That's right, uh, Miss V M. It's not just Kojic. I'm using Kojic because that's the church I know. You pastors, bishops, apostles, prophets out there. If you tell the people the truth, they will pay off your debt, our debt, or we will make a decision to get out of that mess. You see, some of y'all are taking on too much. Get rid of the building because all you're doing is making the flock poorer. They are already struggling because in America, we don't know what is getting ready to happen next. Recession. We don't know if a Great Depression is coming. They already raised the interest rate again yesterday. This is the 10th time over one year period that the feds raised the interest rate. People are losing their jobs. These big box stores are closing down and three major banks shut the doors. If y'all can't see what's happening in America and y'all are sitting here telling me that God told you to give a thousand dollars to a church house and you then your, all your dreams will come true. Listen, you might as well go down there to the soothsayer, the palm reader, the psych, go down there. You might as well give your money to her. Cause that's the same thing you're doing when you hear that mess at church. I don't play those games. I hate it. When I see all that stuff in the church, I put up, like Oscar, the Baptist finger. Coach, got the same finger. So y'all stop wasting money. You're wasting money on nonsense. And that nonsense, I don't even talk about clothing and expensive cars and exotic trips. I'm talking about at the church. Because guess what? When in this economy crash and burn, you're going to go to the church for a handout and guess what they're going to do? Guess what they're going to tell you? Because I literally heard the, one, a few pastors say, the church is not a place for giving out loans and scholarships and all that. My house should be the house of God, uh, the house of prayer that is. That's what pastors say. This is the house of prayer. This is not a place for y'all be, to get on. But yet, you are telling the people to give you $1,000 apiece. So if Jesus was on the earth today, he would come in these churches and whip the money changes. So if this is your house, this is not God's house, it's yours. You built this because you wanted it. That man put on women's shoes because she, he wanted to wear those shoes. You built that building because you wanted it. You didn't build it for God. You built it for you and those members so that y'all have a place so that you can worship God. But you didn't build it for God. Stop playing with me. <laughs> Somebody lying. Y'all lying. Because God said, I didn't tell you to build that. So now that you build it, you got single mothers who you said that they need to take this so much amount for every time you're having a special service, you you put all of this financial strain on these single mothers. There ain't no man in the house. She's already struggling. She got she got a latchkey kid because she at work, and then when she leave work, she got to go to work. And then you making her. I've seen them make these women stand in the thousand dollar line because the pastor's anniversary is coming up. Let me tell y'all, man, that. That rattles my nerves. That rattles my nerves. And when his anniversary come up, y'all have the uh, all of the departments to bring the, the whatever money is in the account. They got to bring it all in because they got to give it to the pastor. Misappropriation of funds have been going on in the church for decades. 
and you all are laughing or upset at Juanita Bynum and those people at that church, you all were in that same much, much, um, that, what is it? What's the word? Mess. There it is. I usually say messology. <laughs> Y'all was in that just yesterday. Giving the pastor the monies that's in the missions offering. Because it's his anniversary. The missions department. Give that money to the pastor. It's his anniversary. Misappropriation of funds. And if the government, and I'm praying and hoping, that the government start cracking down on these churches. They have to crack down on these churches. Crack down. Y'all like, you're, you're biting the hand that feeds you. Ain't nobody feeding me but me. God is the only one who feeds me. Shut it down. Even if it hurt me, shut it down and get it right because we are keeping people in poverty. Do y'all remember when Noel Jones was with two or three other men on that Zoom call in the middle of the pandemic and he started to cry? I wish I had that video. He said, oh, we have fleeced the people. These women, these people, they could not survive. And here we are asking them for the, we, we were begging them for the, we were taking this money from them all these years. Y'all remember that video? He just he just just couldn't control himself because he finally came to the realization the pandemic came and we saw how many people were not ready. You remember that, Nancy? You remember that, Shirley? And he just he couldn't control himself. And the other ministers were there like, well, yes, yeah, all right, Bishop, all right, Bishop, because they was just as guilty as this mess. It's still on, on YouTube, Michelle. Somebody need to find it and send it to me. He's crying. And when I saw him crying, my, okay, here it is. When I saw him crying, my, um, my heart went out to him first. Thank you. My moderators be on it. My heart went out to him at first, and then I said, mm-mm. Bishop, it's too late for that. I got hard. I, I mean, I went. Pfft. Here it is right here. For those of you who never saw it. These gifts to the hospital, instead of taking offerings from church folk over diseases and stuff that they have, why don't we take it to the hospital where a doctor can prove what it is we said happened? And this is why the people are mad now. And we're losing people all over the world because mm. my church yeah. is saying to me now, they say to me and they, they leave me broken. Oh, Why didn't you tell us this was coming? Mm. I think the prophets, we had all the prophets. We gave them all our money. And I'm working my heart out trying to, to recover. Yes, Bishop. people who are broken who don't understand Thank you, what we did, what we did, what we did. We broke them. We broke them. You got to hear what I hear. We broke them. You got to feel what I feel. People who are genuine would give their life. Yeah. And they're broken. Broke them. We broke them. We broke them. This is the mess I've been preaching for years. You breaking the people. Now they got nothing. So you try to find new members so you can break them. So God came and broke y'all. Shut them churches down. And many of them never recovered. Because payback. And then Creflo Dollar comes on the scene. And, re and he didn't repent. He even told y'all, I'm not repenting for telling y'all about tithe. I was teaching it wrong, but I can't repent because I didn't know. And that man, when I did the show on him, I said, man, how old, how old is Creflo now? What is he, 60? That's why I laugh a lot of times because I don't want to cuss. Creflo, man, you was a grown 
man with a, a mega church with degrees behind you and a businessman, an intelligent man, and you was f- telling this lie of tithing to these people all these years. And then you're going to turn around and say, uh, my bad. Somebody found a video where his member was in the car saying, no, no, not my bad. You the one, you get you getting mad at the people for teaching tithe. You was teaching the tithe yourself. You made us get up here and, and, and we built this house through our tithe. No, man, you got to make this right. You remember when the, the, one of his members, a, a, a brother in the car, was saying, no, you got to make this right. I know this is on the cuff, y'all, and I already lied, said I was going to make this short. I'm a lying prophet. But, but, but the Lord told me <laughs> to go in this manner. I need, to, I need y'all to get this, get this, get this. Come on, Desiree, Benny Hinn, he too said, I've been teaching y'all about prosperity, and, I'm, I'm, and then he got upset with y'all, these other preachers, for preaching prosperity. I'm not going to do it anymore. And then told y'all in your face that he knew the truth. He knew it. It's the Fox News theology. It's the Fox News theology. Fox News said that the election was stolen and they knew they were lying. Every night they went on and and said that Trump is the man. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And the, the, the liberals stole election, blah, blah, blah. They brought in the, the pillow guy. They brought in uh, the former uh, mayor of, of uh, New York. And I, they brought in the other woman. They, they brought him in and they just on. They just, they just. And then you see them, the receipts where they were talking in the text message about how they know good and well that was a lie. They knew it was a lie, but they kept going because they were doing it for the ratings. Because, because with, their, with ratings comes Money. Well, they was trying to save their ratings and that savings cost them 780 something million dollars. And then heads start to roll. That's what the church is doing. Many of these men know they're lying to you. Come on, Sherry Lynn. Yeah, the, the, the nephew ousted him, but he was but Benny was like, no, that's not true. Knowing he was lying, Creflo didn't just find out the day that he came forth with that sermon. Creflo had known for a long time that tithing was a lie. The way he was teaching it was a lie. He knew it, but he kept doing it. And so, Brother Jones, Bishop Noel Jones, when he started to cry, I said, no, nah, bro. I feel some pain, but I can't feel it all. Too late, man. Too late. You'd already killed these people. You broke them. You should have known better. I can't cry with you. I had to quickly wipe my. Nope, nope. I can't get him. I can't. I can't get pulled in when a man is crying. I can't get pulled into that. Nope. No, man. I've been, we've been warning you all, and the Holy Spirit been warning you all. You've been killing the saints all these years. The pandemic came, and then the saint says, we got nothing. Nothing. Now we're going to lose this place. We got nothing, and we can't go back to the place in which we gave thousands of dollars to. We can't go back to this place y'all said was the storehouse. How is this a storehouse when there's nothing here? Nothing. <laughs> We're broken. Nah, bro. Nah, nah, man. Nah. Nah. And guess what? Many of these same preachers went right back to fleecing the flock. Benny Hinn, a week later, went right back and started fleecing y'all all over again. Yes, he did. Creflo, too. He went right back to manipulation in his tithing teacher teaching. Yes, he did. 
He's disguising it under something else. What's in the name? All these preachers who apologized went right back to doing what they know best because they got a big house they need to take care of. Come on. Many of them got that PPP loan. And the government start knocking on the door. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, let me see your sheet. Let me see your paper. Let me see your receipts. We ain't got none. Ah. Handcuffs. How many times have we seen the pastor in handcuffs? The government's coming. They're coming. They're coming, y'all. They're coming. Here's the brother right here. Man, I, I thank you. Uh, okay, wait, is this it? Yeah. That's him. That's, that's uh, Sean. Sean did it. Okay. Check this out. Pastor Creflo Dollar, my my spiritual father and his decision to, you know, um, say that tithing was now, um, you know, not scriptural for the New Testament believer. Um, I get that. I actually sat and watched the video, just finished watching it. And um, this is to my pastor, my spiritual father. I just thought the video was just not reflective of the apology in the beginning. That, yeah, you apologized in the beginning, but dad, you you didn't take ownership throughout the, the message. It was what the churches did and the, what they said and they said this and they said no you said these things you said will a man rob god you made us feel ashamed and guilty for that you made us feel uh uh, uh ashamed and, and and fearful that if we didn't tithe we were going to be cursed you made us feel like that you fired members who who worked for you because they didn't they didn't tithe you did those things you had other church members looking at those who didn't tithe with side eyes. You said the church wasn't going to be Ichabon. No, we were going to have, you know, tithers in, 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 our, in our midst. We weren't going to have no, no non-tithers in our midst. You did these things for years. You said God built the church. No, and, and I get it. I get it. Yeah, God built the ministry, but he built it off of our tithes and offerings. We tithed and offered to that ministry for years and to minister that in, a, in an off-putting way like you did was just hurtful people left the church people people felt felt hurt by this message and i know you've evolved but you got to take ownership dad where's the ownership and in that message, you took no ownership it was it was them that did it it was all of them no you did it you said these things. This was your brand. Come on, man. I hope this reach you. But you got to do better in another one. You got to give us something else. We need a real, true apology. Because that message, it just wasn't it. I'm sorry. Love y'all, man. Do good. Be good. Because God made you good. That message wasn't it, he said. He lied to us all these years. I cannot put the full blame on the people who are sitting in the audience because you've got a mix a congregation of people who with different uh, uh, intellectual levels and understandings. So you can't blame everybody who's in the audience always getting fleeced because there are people there who are milk drinkers, as the word says. You're milk drinkers, pretty much. That's all you are. And so um, there's some people there. Unfortunately, um, let's see. Let's see if I can find something here. Uh, right here. Hebrews chapter 5. And let's go to the 11th verse. Maybe this will speak to you here. Here's what the writer of Hebrews says. There was much 
there is much uh, more we would like to say about this, but it is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. That's why I can't blame all of these people there. Some people just don't understand. My, my grandson, Charles, he don't know what's going on. He just want to cry. All he knows is when he cry, his, he gets a titty in his mouth. Solid food is for those who are mature. My grandson, Amir, now is eating solid foods. <laughs> he got most of his teeth now. He was, So when my, my daughter says stop, he stops because he know now was right. Who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between was right and was wrong. You should know by now. So I can't blame everybody, but some of y'all I can. Some of y'all I have to blame you because how long you going to uh, tell God I didn't know? How long? How long? So then the next chapter, here's what he said. So let us stop going over the basic teaching about Christ again and again. Let us go instead of becoming mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repentance from, from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instructions about baptisms. Come on. How many times have we done a show on that? Laying on the hands. How many times have we done a show on that? The resurrection of the dead. How many times have we talked about that? An eternal judgment. Also, uh, and so, uh, God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. Let's move on to something that you don't know. How long are we going to let you just sit here and just be urinated on? You going to let yourself be urinated on. You, you come into the knowledge of the truth and then you still sit there. What that is, is cognitive dissonance. And you have uh, got comfortable to the place where you are fearful to stand up and walk out. You are afraid. You're like a deer in headlights. You don't know what else to do because all you know is that type of cloud of deception. So that's all you know. So you get comfortable in that. And like a dog with a whole bunch of gnats and all kind of things and ticks and stuff all right and he's disgruntled and his fur is got he's got bald uh you know meat showing what have you the dog don't know where else to go because the master is gone and then he's out there in the streets trying to get something out of the garbage and he just he's he's he needs to be rescued well some of y'all need to be rescued you're walking around in a circle like a maimed dog just walking around you don't know what you know because you've been bit by the wolves of these pastors and apostles and prophets, you've been bit by them. They stung you and took all you had and shook you, turned you upside down and shook you. And then they brought, brought the mu musician in there. He was the Pied Piper. He was the praise team leader. He came in there and then he or she shook you. All right, played the pipe. And now here you are naked, cold, and alone. And so what did God said to those Hit the children of Israel. I saw you on the side of the road, bleeding, naked, in, in your own fecal matter. He said, and God says, I cleaned you up. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And I washed you, gave you some new clothes, gave you something to eat. And I, and I healed your wounds. That's what God said he did to Israel. And he's doing the same thing. You know, he did the same thing to you. But what did you do? The same thing Israel did. Like a pig who just got a shower. You let him go outside the back door. And what is he going to find? He's not looking for another shower. He's looking for a sty. Mud. Dirt. Filth. Doo-doo. You have returned back to your vomit. So now whose fault it is? It's yours. Take the blame. Take the blame. Come out of this because some of your churches is Ichabod. The glory of the Lord left that church long time ago if it was ever there. Ichabod, Baptist church. 
Ichabod, Pentecostal holiness. Ichabod, Church of God in Christ. Ichabod, apostolic. Ichabod. Non-denominational. Ichabod. He's not there. It's a place to be fleeced. All right. So I went heavy on you tonight so that hopefully you wake up the next morning, tomorrow morning, and say, mm, I got to do better. I'm pulling in all my, my finances. I'm pulling it in. I got to shut this off. I don't need all these, these uh, monthly subscriptions. I, I, don't, I don't need that, that expensive trip I know I can't afford. I may need to cancel that because I don't know what the government's getting ready to do. I need to pull this in. And I need to pull that in, all right? Anybody who owe me some money, I need to pull them in. Give me my money now. I need, I need it now, all right? Do this. Do, pull it in. Pull it in. And shut the door. Shut the door and start producing stuff, something and pour into other people's lives and, and get them to a place where they can see that something's coming. Get yourself ready. Get your house in order because something's coming. It's inevitable. We're due for something to come. You wasn't ready in 2020 when the pandemic, the pandemic actually came in 19, I'm sorry, in 2019. It actually came then, but it didn't hit us heavy, heavy, heavy. It just blew on us like God, Jesus blew on the disciples. That's, that's 2019. And then Acts chapter 2 came in 2020. Bam! You weren't ready. Now the warning is out. Get ready now so that you will be ready. And be like Joseph told the, the Egyptians. Famine is coming. So here's what you're going to do. All this grain. Pull up enough grain to last you for seven years. Pull it up. Pull it up because it's going to be seven years of famine. So you got to do a little extra digging. Do a little extra digging. Consider the way of the ant. Thou sluggard. Do a little extra. Store up. Stop being a grasshopper. Store up. Store up. Store up. And start investing. All right. Start saving. Start investing. Start being Almost being stingy, meaning stop buying stuff. Still make sure people have things. Still take care of the poor. Still take care of the needy. You know, give to them and you're, and you're lending to the Lord. Still do that. Don't stop doing that. All right. But when it comes to being fleeced by the church, I'm sorry to tell you, you got to tell pastor, listen, pastor, I got to pull it in. I got to pull it in. I got to pull it in and save my house. See, because if I'm trying to save that house that y'all wanted us to build, we save that house. I lose my house. I can't move into the big house. You won't let me move in here. I can't even put a cot in the basement. I'm going to lose my house, and you're going to tell me to go suck on the tit of the government. The, the government, they, they, they go down there, sister so-and-so, and they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll give you some stamps and, you know, and help you out, help you out. This, this, this is the house of God. I'm sorry, y'all. I ain't falling for it. Not happening to me. Okay, since I'm a lying prophet, I went an hour and a half. So if you can forgive me for lying, <laughs> all right, I forgave y'all. <laughs> I forgave I forgave Danny for not coming to class Tuesday. <laughs> I did. I forgave him. All right. Hit the share button. If you're on YouTube, uh, subscribe to the channel. You know we go live. It's about 500, 500 and about 15 of y'all came tonight. All right. So if about 500 of y'all hit the like button, uh, our numbers will go up. And if you all subscribe to the channel, then, then we can talk some more this weekend. Hmm? Sunday school, Saturday. Nine o'clock Central Standard Time. Okay, Sunday school. Meet me there, and we'll talk more about stuff that is palatable, so you can stomach the Sunday school. We don't fuss, we don't fight, we don't argue. We talk about the Word of God, and we make y'all feel better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, and then Sunday night. Well, we'll go back to maybe doing some stuff that might not be too tasteful. <laughs> okay, we don't do this all the time. We we'll do. Come on, the bunkers will tell you I don't fight with y'all all the time. No, I don't. We're well-rounded here. Very well-rounded. Uh, if they leave, uh, where will they go? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's the, the alternative? All right. If they leave where? The church? What? Where? What are you talking about? I'd like to know what you meant by that clear so that I get an understanding. Were you responding to, to me or someone else because the comment comes in differently? If they leave, where do they go? What's the alternative? Help me out. Okay, the church. You asked a good question. 
Come closer, clear water, clear faith, clear water. Come close, come, come, come close, come close. <laughs> come close. How do you leave the church? How do you leave yourself? Because when we when we say the church, we typically talking about a building, but that ain't the church. So when you say leave the church, you know there's thousands of churches out there, thousands of. Them. All right, so we usually reference that as a building. But how do you leave the church? Because when I sought the Lord. And he showed up and filled me. Guess where I was? <laughs> All right, clear. He said, I know the answer, but the babes in Christ <laughs> don't know. I like this man. I really do. Mm-hmm. When the Lord filled me, none of y'all was around. <laughs> Come on, Linda. None of y'all was around. And whenever I hear the Lord speaking to me, guess where he speaks to me? Almost always, y'all ain't around. <laughs> y'all ain't around at home. And when I get in that shower and that water hits me, God's voice is loud. Y'all ain't around. And if y'all are, you're peeping toms. <laughs> you understand? So how do you leave the church? How do you leave yourself? <laughs> Great question. though. So if you're uncomfortable in one building, go to another. There might be, there's another building out there for you who ain't as crazy as maybe the place you come from. And when you're tired, there's a lot of people who say, I'm tired of buildings all together. So what they do? They don't go to these buildings. They just don't. You think they're going to hell? <laughs> huh? You think they're going to hell? The first century church when thousands uh, began to get saved, they went from house to house. <laughs> you are like, well, they didn't have no churches there. Yes, they did. The Bible says that they went to the temple. The Bible says after the Holy Ghost fell, Acts chapter 2, Peter preached the gospel, and they then went from house to house to have communion, and then they worshiped God. Where? In the temple all day. <laughs> they went to church. <laughs> so don't tell me there weren't no buildings. They went to the temple. Sure did. So where did God really show up? From house to house. <laughs> and this is why pastors don't like y'all having these prayer meetings at home because he is insecure. He's afraid that that house is going to turn into the new church and it's going to split because he is not competent enough to keep members. <laughs> Y'all, I'm smiling because I don't want to cuss. <laughs> Let me get out of here. God, I thank you for your presence and your blessings and the people who have come into this room. Boy, 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 have I stirred up something here. I can't apologize for none of it. I will not. Until the day I die, I will never apologize for the word of God. Ever. So I see my brother here who's speaking, and Oscar, my brother Oscar speaks of Hebrews 10, forsaking out the assemblies of one another. We do that. They did that when they went from house to house. They did not forsake the assembly of one another in the home. When I'm with my daughter and when I'm with my son and with my grandchildren, we have come together as a church, forsaking not the assemblies of one another at home. <laughs> God, I thank you. And so I choose on a Sunday to uh, worship you among many other people in the beauty of holiness, where there's music and there's comfort from the elements of outside. I thank God, thank you for that wonderful corporate worship. That is an, a way that we can come together one chase a thousand two put ten thousand to flight their safety in numbers god thank you for the multitude of the saints in the ecclesia meanwhile what do i have monday through saturday i've got house to house ministry <laughs> is where your voice really speaks without a lot of the loudness that we hear and the emotions at these buildings i can worship you at home and you can talk to me back 
as I say, hark, the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. God, I thank you for this word. It's sharp. It cut. Some folk are bleeding. Now go and mend them. I know you will. We love you and give your name to praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Love y'all. Take care of yourselves and one another. Will you please? Uh, we're going to see what my grandchildren are up to. And uh, y'all going to be all right. Uh, uh, take some medicine or some aspirin or something. And some water. Really? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see if I can. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to help you. Hold on. No, you're not. Dang. Get, hold on. I'm trying to help you. Stop. I got both my boogers. Yes, I do. I got both my boogers. Boogers for me and you. This is my youngest booger. This is my oldest booger. And the oldest, oldest booger is in Atlanta, Georgia. Ah, I got all my boogers with me. Mm -hmm. I got Charles in the mirror, you see. They my boogers, my boogers. They really are. Oh, one is escaping. One is escaping. One, one, is, one is escaping. <laughs> one is escaping. Where you going, man? Where you gonna leave your brother? Huh? You gonna leave, you leaving your brother? I got only one booger with me. Women That Men Desire by Sir Walter Jones is a women's guide to men. The authors endeavor to expose men fundamentally with his perspective on the types of women that men truly desire. He has meticulously penned a brilliant and controversial read, bold in its assertion that all women fall into one of four categories. Girl A, the side chick. Girl B, the mistress. Girl C, his soulmate. Or Girl D, his fatal attraction. And when a woman walks into a room, her category is showing. 
The Four Women That Men Desire is funny, informative, and enlightening. It is a quick read and a must-have for your library. Head over to Amazon.com for your copy. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?